God ever in the history of the NBA. Certainly, he has given us some great memories over the years. How about a big round of applause for right now on the floor, number 24, the Black Mama, Kobe Bryant. Welcome to the Kobe Show, take two. Kobe was something special. There's no question about it. There's a reason why we mention MJ, we mention Kobe. The greatest who ever wore the purple and gold. For 20 years, he thrilled us. He made us scratch our head. What did we just see? What did we just witness? I'm saying Kobe Bean Bryant, in my estimation, was the greatest basketball player. Studied the game, was a student of the game, worked harder than anybody else, including Jordan. And he gave us five NBA championships. Once the game started, when we competed against each other, um, probably after the first time I played him, my rookie year, you, you, you keep the main thing the main thing, and you're trying to go out and win the game, and he's trying to destroy you because that's what Kobe's all about. When I, like I said, I was a 15-year-old kid who was able to meet him. I was in awe. We all root for one another, no matter past, present, or future. And I thought about the expectations you guys have for me and you have for our team, and it pushed me through. It got me through those 800s and 400s and 100s at 5.30 in the morning, so I thank you. Thank you, Kobe, for not only making the players on your team better, but you forced your opponents to raise their game as well. Thank you, Kobe, for inspiring a generation of fans to fall in love with the game. And Kobe, I thank you for staying loyal to the purple and gold. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Process This. I know you don't normally see this many people uh, on the screen or during the weekdays when we post, but uh, today is going to be a special episode dedicated to Kobe Bryant and, the, and his daughter and the seven other lives lost uh, in the helicopter accident this weekend. Uh, if you don't know, uh, Kobe Bryant and his daughter were on their way to a travel basketball game uh, in Calabasas, California along with seven other people and unfortunately the helicopter went down and there were no survivors. Now, there's a lot of things, uh, a lot of emotions, a lot of um, just feelings going around, not just the NBA community, not just the basketball community, but the world. And, you know, I think uh, when something like this happens, it's a tragedy and, you know, there's no real way to um, kind of process uh, the feelings and what's going on. Uh, all yesterday, uh, I, me personally, I was numb. I was, you know, shocked. I didn't know how to react, but I knew one thing, and uh, the only thing that I could think of was Kobe would want everyone, and everyone to just keep pushing through. You know, Kobe's legacy is something a lot more than just being a basketball player. Kobe's legacy is a lot more than being a man. He is a legend. He is uh, a global icon, and that is a word that I don't use often, I think the word icon is something, uh, is a word that should only be associated with the best of the best, and Kobe de deserves that title. But on top of that all, he's, he's what it meant to work. He's what it meant to achieve your dreams, and um, instead of sitting here and mourning and, you know, just down in the dumps all day, I think it would be good uh, to have a tribute and reminisce about, you know, just the impact he's had on not just the NBA community, but the world, and kind of sit down with anyone in the uh, Tiger Vision uh, family, wanted to go over our favorite Kobe moments and, uh, you know, just how he impacted our lives. Uh, obviously, I can speak for everyone here in saying that our condolences and uh, our prayers go out to not just the Bryan family, but everyone, uh, all the families affected, close family, friends of, just, of Kobe, of the other victims in the uh, accident. Uh, our prayers and everything go out to you and your families. So 
without further ado, uh, I would like anyone who would like to start off uh, with a favorite Kobe memory. Anything, Pearson, what are you feeling? Any, any thing that Come on, let's go, Pearson. Come on, Pearson. So, uh, my favorite Kobe memory uh, is one that I actually heard a lot as a child. Uh, I stayed up late one night. It was a Friday night. I was eight years old. It was December of 09 when the Lakers were playing the Heat. And, and with 3.2 seconds left, the Lakers had an inbound. Heat were up two with uh, Dwayne Wade covering uh, Kobe. And Kobe went, got the inbound, hit a fadeaway three to win the game. And ripped my heart out as a child, but that was the moment I knew that Kobe was the greatest. And knowing the impact that he would have on my, uh, when me playing basketball as a young child and calling Kobe every time I would shoot a basketball from there on out to try and signify that moment and the greatness that he brought both on and off the court with how many things he did for not just the basketball world but for the world in general through charities for being an ambassador and just trying to make the world a better place and it was a fun game I remember, I've watched the highlights from that game plenty of times, too. I mean, yeah. I'm sitting next to two Heat fans here. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're well, we're well I'm playing. feeling a lot of bittersweet tension yeah. <laughs> from that oh, shot. Yeah. Yeah. But, but uh, Looking back on it, though, you savor every minute of it. So. That's a shot you remember. Yeah. <laughs> Whether you're a Laker fan, a Heat fan, now. that's a shot you remember. Yeah. Uh, who's next? Who would like to go next? Someone in the back, pick it up, because I've got the same story as Patrick. And yeah, we're going <laughs> to, <laughs> we kind of have the yeah, same one. I'll take, I'll take it. Uh, for me, it's it's a moment that I can't you know I can't give it the date name the you know time and date. But for me, the first ever basketball game I saw on TV, I had to be three or four. I couldn't I couldn't tell you, and it was on at a family member's house because uh, my parents never really were the you know basketball type. But I just remember it was uh, Shaq and Kobe, and I was you know I couldn't really understand what was happening because I didn't <laughs> understand basketball, but I was just mesmerized by these two giants to me, especially Shaq, but these two, <laughs> these two giants to me just absolutely, you know, you know, Kobe darting all over the court and, you know, you know, shooting right in people's faces, you know, throwing down in dunks that I cannot literally conceptualize at that age. And then, you know, when, when he was in trouble dishing it off to the big man. And, <laughs> uh, like, that sparked my interest in basketball and while I have become a, a more full-time basketball fan more recently uh, which is why like if I had to pick a specific moment it would be when he hit towards Achilles if it hit two free throws because I was watching an that game one. and I as a, I would say as a Lakers one. say as a <laughs> as a Lakers fan that was terrifying but also incredibly inspiring to watch the most Kobe moment of Kobe moments. <laughs> it really is, yeah. but he, he's the reason that I, really that I got into watching basketball and is the reason why I'm a Lakers fan today is because whenever I wanted to watch basketball, I wanted to watch Kobe. And so for me, you know, no, you know, beyond now his death, like he'll always, that memory will always be with me. I will always remember Kobe as the reason why I became a fan of basketball in the first place. Anyone else? Kate, would you like right. to talk? <laughs> of course. No, I, I was going to say, I have. I just remember how Kobe impacted the game, how I would wake up in the morning. I never really watched NBA as a kid, but I remember watching SportsCenter every morning and just hearing the impact that he had on the NBA and the games and to the whole Lakers community. And also, I remember actually a couple of years ago, I'm a big college women's basketball fan. And I remember watching Arike Agumawali knock down two buzzer beaters. And what's cool about that was that Kobe actually reached out to her afterwards and told her to go win the national championship, and she ended up doing that. And to me, it carried a significant amount of importance to me because as a woman being recognized by someone of that caliber in the NBA, it made the women's basketball community feel that much more important. And losing him yesterday not only was a big loss for the NBA, but it also was a huge loss to not only the WNBA, but women's college basketball as well. So to me, as a woman and a women's basketball fan, it's, it's devastating to see someone go who truly was in awe of the women who played basketball as well. Wasn't there a 
Did he come out a couple not like too long ago? He didn't say there was a couple of WNBA players he thought could play in the NBA right now. Oh yeah, that yeah. was yeah. real recent. That was real recent. That was real recent. That was that was last week. I, I was gonna say that was been like a week ago. You're right. That was very, very recent. Yeah. I remember because he was talking yeah. about like was it Maya uh, Moore? Maya Moore, Del- Diana Taurasi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ella Della Donna, isn't that how you say oh, it? Yeah, yeah. Della close, Donna. Close enough. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm bad with names. <laughs> I know she was also, or he, well, him and Gianna were really big uh, fans of the, the, of the of the UConn women's basketball. And yeah. for me, I grew up in Connecticut, so the, yeah. but the only basketball games I could really go to was UConn basketball. So, which was a lot closer in men's game than women's game, but the women were much more impressive to watch. And so, to kind of have that experience, uh, like that connection with him and you know, his daughter as well of, you know, being fans of that team. Wow. Even though they might not be the most exciting team to be a fan of because they mm-hmm. obliterate everyone. It's just the sheer, like, yeah. impressiveness of their basketball. Talent. And the yeah. fact that he, someone who is so good and had such a great knowledge of the game, could still, still went to those games and admired what they were doing yeah. is remarkable as well. Yeah, I was going to say, and also he, he also reaches out to people, I think, it's something that's admirable about him is that he reaches out to people. I mean, he gives advice to these players, men or women, mm-hmm. and including even the other day when he actually passed yesterday. He wrote Shaquille O'Neal's son. Yeah, I did see that these. Morning. That morning, you see that? I, I mean, did. I he was... asked and just said, how are you doing? That's it. He and was known for that, though. I mean, across yep. the league, he would go and just ask just anyone. And would, you, need, you need not to be, you know, like the next LeBron James, just anyone yep. in the league. You know, how are you doing? It just NBA players here, though, because it was it's, also like reporters and yeah. other people. It was everyone. He reached, yep. out, he, re- he reached out and touched so many more I mean, people than just basketball players. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, he was the com- – he was – Arguably the staple of the community. I mean, he really was yeah. someone who reached out to anybody yeah. and everybody. So, yeah. Sam, would you like to oh, bring it back to the got, front row? I got or? your story though. Do you want to it's tell? It's all your right. Story? Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. All right, so Patrick and I have some more stories here, but it was Kobe's right. last game. I was in high school. I don't. You was. Were you a junior? You must have been. Yeah. Yeah, you were a junior. I was a senior. So Wait, was it 2016? I thought it was Maybe I was a junior then. I don't know. It doesn't feel like that long ago. I, see I would have been a sophomore. You'd be yeah, a junior. Yeah, I was a junior. So, yeah. see, it throws me off. But I was getting up early every day for school and all that stuff. So I was really tired. I was exhausted mm-hmm. junior year. But Kobe was on. It's Kobe's last game. So of course, last you gotta watch. You gotta watch. So I stay up. It's halftime. Kobe's got between like 13, 21 points. He's not doing like super hot. Uh, some of his shots just aren't falling there. Lakers are losing big time. He looks like old Kobe. Yeah, yeah. It looks, <laughs> he looks like, like regular yeah. old Kobe. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, I'm like, uh, I'm like uh, I, I still want to stay up, still want to watch this. Passed out. I slid in on a chair with the catch. I forget which one it was. Passed out. <laughs> completely gone. Uh, I wake up. It's like just past midnight. And like Scott Van Pelt's on, I'm pretty sure, because it was on ESPN, I think. Mm-hmm. And they're doing the post-game wrap-up. And Kobe's got over 60 points. And the Lakers <laughs> won the game. And I'm like... I missed this. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me! <laughs> like, oh, man, geez. I was, I was so like, I was happy, but I was so mad at the same time. I'm like, I gotta go back and watch this now. Mm. Yeah, I was, I was like, I was like, are you kidding me? I mean, it was the constant Kobe thing oh, to yeah. do. But oh yeah. Oh yeah. I was like, hey, you gotta be. <laughs> oh, it was crazy. A very similar uh, story to that. But Peyton, I'm gonna let you. Uh, yeah, go absolutely. Next. Go for it. So for me personally, I've been a big basketball fan for a while. I uh, started playing basketball in first grade, I think. Yeah, first grade. Yeah, I get first grade. Let's let's just go with first grade. Anyway, <laughs> so, yeah. so um, I remember the year that they beat the Magic in the finals. I think this was 09. Uh, Emily, yeah, 09. So they beat the, they beat the Magic in the finals that year, and I remember like just really kind of like taking basketball kind of seriously, mm-hmm. not like to the point where like I was training every day I wasn't I didn't have a trainer like everybody else does now when they're nine ten years old and I, I didn't have all these like Just training equipment the yeah you know shooting, it's like on shooting on that Fisher Price hoop right exactly <laughs> so for me I remember at the time it was like summer so I'm going to summer camp my, my parents just like sent me away and um, I remember that I was at the summer camp and we got to watch the game the night before and I think it was game five I don't know why I remember that in the series but Kobe had this killer jab step, right? Oh, yeah. And I remember trying to elevate my game. And I just remember literally going out there for three hours and just jabbing, just jab, constantly just jabbing, right? And 
after that, I tried to be like Kobe for a little while, you know? And it's crazy because like over time, I really didn't like stay that much of a Kobe fan. It kind of changed for me. Like I started to like a couple other players a little more, but I'll, I'll never forget Kobe stuck with me when I went and bought the Kobe fives with all my allowance money that next season. That next season, the Kobe fives came out and I bought those shoes. And I remember those were like the coolest shoes I ever had, like in terms of Nike shoes, like in terms of shoes, period. Mm -hmm. I thought they were the sweetest shoes ever. I didn't know whose signature they were at first, you know, because like I said, I was so young, I didn't really understand. And I remember after the fact that I knew that they were Kobe's shoes, and I just remember like putting it all together, it was just magic. And, and I think that that, like, that's the epitome of his game is he had magic in it and you know people always refer to magic johnson when they talk about kobe but they were such two totally different players but having the same kind of impact is so important and going forward i think it's important for people to just dwell and just live out his legacy and just remember mm -hmm. what kind of player he was on the court but who he was off the court and you know that's something that we want to keep in mind going forward and just live to you know live a life like kobe live to inspire other people the way he did so now, before I go, uh, if you haven't noticed, uh, Jay is not here. <laughs> he is one of the normal hosts. I'm sure you've seen him plenty of times in uh, this seat right here. But uh, he did have some words, so I will bring up uh, my handy dandy phone and uh, look at just exactly what he said. Uh, he wanted uh, to touch us on a lighter note. Uh, the commercial where he jumped over the car is probably his favorite moment with Kobe. He's watched that plenty of times over, uh, and I've, I've heard him say I've heard him say that before. So uh, I can say it's true. And but on a more serious note, uh, his commitment on the spread of the game uh, overall, both globally and his support of WNBA and women's basketball, was something that Jay thought was very cool and very you know important in the basketball community. And so, uh, as before, Jay uh, sends his condolences to all the families involved, and especially to the Bryan family. But as for me, Kobe and I go a little ways back. <laughs> um, similar to Sam's story, uh, Kobe's last game was one of the only games that I had planned my entire day around. Uh, there were only three games. That His last game, the uh, Cavaliers uh, Game 7 Championship against the Warriors, and uh, this most recent championship, Toronto Raptors, uh, Golden State, the last game. Uh, only three games I've ever planned to the T, everything that was going to play out that day so I could watch the thing in full. And uh, I had, remember I had gotten all my schoolwork done well in advance. Uh, I had requested off work early that night. Uh, I had left an hour before the game to go get a pizza. And I was ready to go. I was ready to watch the game. Uh, about after maybe 10, 15 minutes, the first quarter, I'm out cold. Uh, I'm asleep on the couch and I wake up with like two minutes left and I got to, luckily I got to watch the last two minutes of the comeback uh, you know Snoop, Snoop Dogg's going crazy everyone's telling Kobe to shoot the ball and you know he's hitting he's hitting he's at, he's at every shot that when I woke up and I it didn't click in my head that this dude's making everything I'm just like wow the Lakers the Lakers came back with Kobe shooting like that that's crazy I was like how how'd they do that and I went to bed that night, and I didn't think much of it. I was like, oh, cool, Kobe's last game. I woke up the next day, and it finally clicked to me, and it finally hit that Kobe played his last basketball game. And I was like, huh. And they won. How cool. How many points did he have? I think he had like 20 when I went to bed. I clicked on my phone. I'm like, oh my goodness. This dude put up 60. I'm like, this dude, this old guy can still ball. I'm, I'm going crazy. I'm like, no way. And this is at like 6 in the morning before school. And I'm like, I can't even, I thought I was still asleep. <laughs> and um, it was just crazy to see, you know, someone whose game was defined by hard work and just putting the ball in the bucket. You see someone go out with 60 points uh, to top off his legacy. That's just crazy. That's something you write in like fairy tale books. And um, on a more personal note, uh, Kobe... Though I never met him personally, I do have family members that were close. My uh, cousin out in LA, she was a news reporter for Fox, got to know him very well. So um, he was a big household name and someone who, you know, once I actually figured out what Liz did for a living, I'd always nag for an autograph or something, you know, just for proof to make sure she knew Kobe. <laughs> but um, he really did hold a special place in not just my heart, but uh, everyone here and everyone, you know, the past few days looking at uh, what happened and it's just tragic. Words can't put into, I can't put to words uh, just how I feel about it. Uh, like I said, my condolences go out to all the families, not just the Bryants, but um, 
I recall back to what Mike Breen said yesterday. He was talking about a comic in one of the uh, basketball broadcasts that he was doing. Uh, and he said, I just don't feel like broadcasting today. And that really, that really uh, hit a note. Because a lot of the times, like, especially when something like this happens, you just don't feel like getting out of bed. You don't feel like you know, doing this show. You don't feel like practicing. You don't feel like getting everything done. You just kind of want to curl up in a ball and cry. And that's not what Kobe would want. And you know, you take it into account, you, you look at his legacy, he defined what achieving your dreams was. He defined what it was to work hard, that Mamba mentality. You don't get a, you get a nickname, you don't give yourself a nickname. And Kobe gave himself a nickname. Kobe, Kobe termed Mamba mentality, and that stuck. And it, prove that his message wasn't about his legacy. It's about how you can make your legacy great uh, through hard work and through putting everything out every day. And um, <clears throat> it's just a tragic case, but something that we're going to move on from and get stronger. Uh, I know uh, if I could wish for one thing, it, it would be for him to be right back where he was on the court with his daughter. Uh, practicing for the next travel game, but that's not the case. So um, instead, uh, we're going to move forward and we're going to not only remember his legacy but cherish it. We're going to become better. We're going to learn. Uh, on a side note from all of this, uh, and as a personal, just something that I would like to say, always cherish what you have in front of you, the people around you. I mean, all you guys here, it's just, you never know what's going to happen. So, you know, petty things, little, squab little squabbles with people, just, you let it go. It's really, this is just something, so when something like this happens, it makes you realize just how special life is and how special everyone around you really is, family, friends, community. Uh, it just really, really highlights things you take for granted. and. Um, I just, I miss him. I know everyone here misses him. And I know that um, it's going to be a tough month, tough week, tough uh, day as we go by. But um, we'll be OK. And uh, Kobe, I love you, buddy. I miss you. If you're watching this on some screen in the great beyond, uh, thank you. You're our first viewer. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, and. Thank you for showing us the 24 isn't just a number. It's how many hours in a day you put towards what you want to achieve. And uh, from Process This, this is Patrick O'Neill signing off on this special uh, Kobe tribute. We wish you all the best, and good night.